NP with Infinite Lives. Uh, I've got Ty and Julia. We're uh, we're looking at Mushroom Eleven, uh, and your guys' company is called Untame. Untame. Yeah, we're over at uh, Pax Ten. So um, actually, let's let's go this way so you can get some. So what's what's going on? What's what's going on in this game? Like it looks it looks awesome. Like I was actually looking at that and I started looking at this and I couldn't stop I couldn't stop checking out. So what's right. what's kind of like uh, what's the base of this game? So basically, your only interaction is to remove bits of this green blob. Yeah. So you are actually controlling the green blob, but sort of indirectly. Okay. You're only removing it, and for each bit you remove, it'll regrow. So you'll always have a certain number of units that'll uh, regrow around the screen. And so you're sort of pruning and trimming it and trying to solve puzzles based on that. Awesome. It's interesting because you don't have any direct uh, force. You can't like push it into a wall because it'll grow around it. So, yeah. But you have like things like gravity and momentum that you can use to sort of knock things over. So is it is it only like one button click and that's it? Like you're just you're putting the force in that circle? Yeah. Uh, basically, that's uh, this game is. Uh, you're controlling the, the negative space. So really, except yep. for removing or the, the force of destruction, really, if you think about it, you, okay. you have no other force on the environment. It's, uh, it, and, and for us as, as designers, using this as the only mean of control and, and applying as much uh, content and as much uh, oh. versatility yeah. over it, uh, it's actually a very strong feeling that it, it feels like with one single control, you get a lot of... Uh, Variation. Uh, variations, yeah. So it's it's kind of like you're not really technically active in moving it. You're kind of just destroying it, and it's just growing wherever that circle right. isn't. It's, it's like exactly trimming that. a bush or something. Wow. Like okay. Your, your so something. I mean, what's the origin of this of this uh, of of this game? Like, where did this where did this idea come from? So we started this game actually, Julia and I. Uh, uh, we started this game two uh, two and a half years ago at the Global Game Jam. Of 2012. Oh wow! Okay. Right, and we've been game working game, yeah. on. Yeah, and um, I, I kind of uh, broke off and wor worked on it for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. Lately, Julia uh, joined back the, the, the team uh, as a as a designer, and uh, I remember the the theme back in the Global Game Jam was uh, the symbol of uh, rebirth and destruction, the Ouroboros, which. For, for me was a good symbol of how you can use destruction as growth okay so I took it kind of metaphorically yeah, how yeah, you yeah. would make a, a platform game or a, pla a platformer uh, and a pa puzzle game and use this as your your mechanics so. Wow okay um, is this is this your first game that you guys are collaborating together with, uh, no actually we put out a another puzzle game a couple years ago called Rope Rescue for oh, iOS what? and Android. It was called Rope Rescue. Rope Rescue, okay. We released that, I think, what, in 2011, so that's three years ago. Yeah, yeah. I, right before, we released it right before we started working on this one. Okay. And it, it did pretty good. It, it was a much simpler uh, puzzle game, also uh, with heavy influence of uh, physics and uh, but it was it's a smaller game. This is a, definitely our biggest endeavor. Okay. So are you two the only people working on this game? I nope. mean, this, okay. We have uh, another married couple, actually. <laughs> wow, okay. Kono's, uh, they, they just went <laughs> to lunch right now, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, awesome, Simon though. Kono is our artist, and Kara Kono is our producer. This, um, the art looks fantastic yeah, right now. That, that background looks amazing. incredible. Amazing. He's right. so We've talented, been working so. a lot in the really last couple of months on adding much more visual content. In fact, uh, uh, if, if, uh, if you look deep into the background and other elements on the screen, you actually see a lot of the story, how the story is told. There's a, a pretty, pretty elaborate story that, is, um, that we provide clues along the way just by watching some of the elements on the screen, some of the uh, degenerated uh, pieces of uh, like items that you see in the background. So you can uh, read a little bit and you can see some, some stuff there. So what's kind of, I mean, the basis of the story? Is this po post-apocalyptic and you're a virus or a parasite or something like that? I want to leave that for the player okay, to interpret okay, okay. what okay. happened to this no, world in space. You're, you're, uh, you're uh, I, I like the, your your thought process on this one yeah, yeah. and uh, in fact 
you can potentially even uh, come up with your own conclusion of what really happened there. I like that. Okay. And um, so we are not like presenting it as like a, 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 as um, you know cutscene or, or yeah, a comic yeah. strip. We we leave it to the player to figure out what really happened there. Well, we okay. do have a lot of um, you know real life in, uh, examples that we're pulling from in terms of like fungus and fungus regeneration and stabilizing uh, carbon atoms and stuff like that. So we'll have some interesting things, but we definitely want to leave the player uh, to figure that out. So I see on the top left corner there looks like a, a DNA strand with a number next to it. So is there like a scoring mechanism or is it is it like are you leveling up or what what's what's going on there? It's, it's actually it's a closer to uh, to scoring mechanism okay. uh, actually and it's also kind of hinting as to the story. I mean, why are you collecting this thing? What does it do to you? Um, how does it reflect in the in the backstory of but what in, really happened in terms to the of world? The game mechanic is does not change the mushroom. It's not like a power up that affects, you know, the green blob. Yeah. Uh, so in that sense it doesn't do anything, but um, but in terms of story it does. Awesome. Okay. So you even put that into the into the story and kind of Kind of moving that, moving that action for it. Okay. Exactly. So, how far along is this game? Like, we're, I mean, can, can can I play this right now? Like, I mean, outside of packs, of course. But yeah. So the game is planned for release uh, in uh, early 2015. Okay. Um, we we've been showing some. Uh, what we're showing here in, in conference is uh, obviously a demo version. Yeah, yeah. It is playable. We we tend not to uh, show it too much. We're we. We're working uh, working on it constantly, adding more content, more yeah. art. Uh, it's gonna, yeah, you know, we're Don't we're gonna show run the best bits right now. Um, <laughs> every now bits, and then, yeah, <laughs> every now and then I can. Got, I feel like I I, I want to show off and I go back there, and do a quick uh, speed run of one of the later How levels. How is so good at it? People think it's a demo. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is kind of because you were playing earlier, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, we we're, were kind of wondering like. We're looking at who is playing on the laptop, and we're like, "This That's looks weird. Like it's it's not the same thing." And then, yeah, we couldn't see you back right there. Right, exactly. The first so, so yeah. this is a PC only game? No, it's actually gonna go come uh, to launch on um, PC, Mac, Linux, okay. and various he handhelds. Yeah, yeah. Um, this looks like it's kind of yeah. It's, it works, it works very on, well on, on handheld. Yeah, for sure. Looks and uh, touch and stylus as well. Right, right. All right, cool. Um, on on, uh, on our podcast, I always like whoever I talk to. I always like to talk, um, ask them what their gamer origin is, and you know I don't want to get too in depth. I mean, you know, you guys are, are busy and everything, but like I mean, you know, if you want to share a little bit of like, you know, how did you start gaming? Like, wow, wow, okay. So I started uh, making games uh, as a as a kid, really, yeah, uh, yeah. a long time ago, right? And um, I. I made a kind of a detour in my career, like may start doing other uh, uh, software engineering things, mm -hmm. uh, and then when I finally came back to gaming, just uh, ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, just something that I always wanted to do, and I didn't even think that it was an option. That it, it is, it is a profession. Yeah. Until I, I realized that you know. Uh, the, you make you make your profession. You, if you're able to uh, to get your hobby and uh, make this your profession, then you're a very very lucky individual, right? So that that is my that is my you know background, like being able to actually pursue my hobby and, and yeah. go through with it as, as something that would you know, sustain me. That would be that is wonderful. So what's the first couple games that you remember like really like affecting you going like wow I really like this game I mean not changing your it doesn't have to change your life or anything but like you know like this is great like this is one of my favorite games um, oh I have a completely different yeah story. that's oh yeah because uh, I feel like a lot of women tend or at least of my generation mm -hmm. we didn't know that like game development was a thing like I feel like most guys who's like yeah. our age was like oh I want to make games since I was like you know a little kid and for us it was like I didn't even think coding was an like option until option. like college or high school so I didn't get into gaming until I wanted to do educational stuff and I, oh, okay. I did uh, educational 
uh, games for kids, and that's how I got into it, just because I wanted to like help kids with learning disabilities, and games is a great way to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then after that, I was like, oh my god, people actually enjoy this stuff, <laughs> and they love this stuff. Maybe I could just do this, you know, outside of education and just, you know, do different experiences. And that, that was really cool. Is that is still, still a passion for you? Like, uh, oh, totally. Games? Yeah, the next yeah. game we're going to work on is going to be a little bit more educational, but not like the, you know, this yeah, is, yeah. you know, like knowledge we're going to throw at you. It's yeah, more yeah. like something that, you know, is interesting that you can use games as an experience. And you, you know, won't know any different, but you'll learn stuff as you play. Very cool. So, games that you yeah. are inspired by. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I. I think uh, uh, one of the games that inspired me, although, you know, you can't really see too much. I mean, it was a, a great game in the opportunity that it presented. Um, it's called The Incredible Machine. I think it came out yes. in the early, I want to say early 90s, probably. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that game was, I mean, it didn't really have any interesting narrative or anything, but the opportunities, that, uh, the open canvas that it presented the player, uh, to solve problems in in, in, in un, indefinite uh, space of problem solving. That is a, 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 a like the first time I've seen such a such wealth uh, the, the, the the opportunities that the game presents. I mean, in a non-linear way, mm -hmm. like trying to to progress in the game while presenting so many different opportunities. I can I can see all of that right there. And like, so yeah, I have yeah. to say that. I, I tried to do that in um, in a pre in, my, in the previous game uh, uh, Rope Rescue, mm -hmm. and you know being able to to allow some sort of uh, expression in the game, but you know it was just kind of, you know, every every challenge had a few solutions, it was, but it was more or less me being curating the game. Yeah, and yeah. in this case, I was like, okay, here's the problem. Go crazy. Now, the, the, there are so many different ways, some of which I haven't even thought of, some, some of which I, I have. Yeah. And this is closer to what I really wanted to do all along. I mean, I would imagine just even creating the levels is half as fun as, as solving them. Because you're, you're really thinking I out. I think it's more fun. Yeah. I, I think you're completely right. Yeah, yeah. And I, I keep telling people that I'm, I'm actually making the game because I enjoy it. I enjoy making the game. Not just playing the game. I enjoy making it. For me... The real game, the real puzzle, <laughs> yeah, is yeah, making yeah. A, a good level. That is the the feeling of actually creating a challenge. It teaches the player yeah. something that and makes them feel accomplished. That is a that's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Well, how about you, Julia? What are some of the early games that you remember playing? Um, for me, it was Myst. Okay, it was yeah, my first yeah. video game because yeah. I didn't grow up with consoles or anything, and I was just so blown away with it. And also, <laughs> the whole time I played it, I was like, I gotta make this. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, yeah. I gotta like create this world. I yeah, was yeah. obsessed with it. I like got HyperCard, which is what it was made in. Shortly <laughs> after, I was playing it, and I was like doing terrible like MS Paint and adding it to HyperCard, wow. trying to recreate this <laughs> world. And that was my launching point. So awesome. Well. Uh, Thanks, both of you, for showing you. us Mushroom 11. This looks awesome. Thank you. Like, I'm looking, for forward, looking forward to, to, to playing this. Like we, we like we like puzzle games. We like indie games and stuff like that. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh -huh. Thanks yeah. a lot. That was, yeah. nice. that was fun. Yeah, yeah.